Hello everyone, today I'm going to do a walkthrough of the Try Hack Me Challenge basic malware RE. So in this lab, uh, we're tasked with finding the original flag string before it gets encrypted. Now, I'm going to be doing this whole lab in Gidra since we aren't directly supposed to be executing these files. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the strings one here. Um, you can see that here we have assembly code and then over here we have our decompiler view. So the first thing we should look for when going into a function is the entry or main function. So let's go ahead and go over here and let's type entry. You can see we have an entry function, so let's go to it. And you can see it defines LP text and it sets LP text set to the MD5 hash of this pointer. Now, um, if we actually go down here, we can actually get a better look at it. And you can see that it says flag can I make it more obvious? So you're probably wondering, well, can't I just solve this by running strings on it? And if you actually go to this pointer, you can see a bunch of other pointers being defined as well. So you actually need to look into how this program executes to actually find the right flag. So now that we know that, let's go ahead and close this one and open up the second challenge. I'm going to say, uh, yes, I do want to analyze this. I'm going to say analyze and um, it brought us to the entry function this time and let's go ahead and scroll through it so we can see a bunch of undefined variables we have a char being defined another char pointer down here being defined so this is actually a stack string so if we go over to the assembly over here you can see right here this is allocating 40 bytes if i ever actually hover over 28 you can see it says 40 bytes of data on the stack and you can see that all of these um, characters are being pushed onto that stack and then this line down here this loads the effective address of the content variable into EAX it then pushes it onto the stack as an argument to the MD5 hash file so basically it takes all of these items it, it from the stack puts it together as a string and um, passes it onto MD5 hash so if we actually hover over each one you can see uh, it prints out the character I'm not going to do that to see the flag I'm going to use ChatGPT to decode all of this and put it into a nice string for us. So I'm going to go ahead and do copy. I'm going to say, can you decode all of these bytes and put them into one string in a code block? Please don't list them one by one. And you can see it prints out flag, stack strings are best strings. So that's going to be the flag to our second challenge. So let's go ahead and load the last one up. I'm going to go ahead and say yes, analyze, and it brings us to the entry. Nice, right? So let's go ahead and kind of look through this. So one of the things I and immediately catches my eye again, right? is even that we don't know like without even looking at any of this we already know this variable is going to be the hash because if this is this challenge is following the same format of their previous two we already know that this is going to be um the flag hash let's rename that the flag hash right so then you can see that uh, a couple of the, the the variables get defined right so let's work backwards so it says flag hash equals md5 digest string, and then we have this local 9c variable. I don't really know what that is. It's a little defined up here. Um, well, it looks like actually it's a class definition. So this is this is just declaring a class. So I'm gonna call this md5, right? So I'm gonna call this md5. And so this is the actual md5 hashing function. And then it looks like a buffer of some sort. Let's see if we can hover over this to gain some more information. So you can see that it takes a char and then it takes a MD5 um, object and then it takes a char buffer. So let's go ahead and let's just assume that this is actually going to be the flag, right? The flag string. So I'm going to say flag. And look, things are already starting to make a little bit more sense, right? So Working backwards still, we can see that it loads some type of string in memory. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to convert this to decimal. Uh, same with this, convert this to decimal. So let's hover over this and see what it says. So this is going to load a string in memory, right? So the instance, in this case, we're saying zero. So maybe that means the current instance, the ID of what we're loading. So in this case, it's 272. 
and then what we're loading it into, which is going to be the flag. So this is whatever this is is very important, right? So we're going to we're going to keep that in the back of our mind. So let's keep moving backwards. Um, this is the same index as before. This was this equals 272. So I'm going to declare this as index. Whoa, index. Uh, working backwards, same thing. Um, find resource A. So this is going to find a resource, and you can see it's called rc.rc. Now, I downloaded all the files to this challenge already. A rc file did not come with this challenge, right? So where is this file? I'm sure that if we execute this file, it's not going to crash and say, hey, I couldn't find the rc file. Um, so where is this file, right? So an RC file is a resource file for a executable. Now you can embed these in, applica in applications. So if we actually go to the left over here, you can see kind of like a, um, a section that shows all the sections in our application. So you can see the headers, right? Text where plain text is defined, data, and then you can see right here, RSRC. So this is the actual um, RC. This is the content of this RCRC. RC. So I'll scroll down to see if we find anything. Do, 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 do. And look, we have a bunch of flags, right? So let's look back at our code, right? We know from the line up here that we're going to be loading a string in the current instance, right? Um, and we're going to load it at the ID 272. So load the 272 item, right? So we know we have this resource file and we're loading it. Let's go ahead and look at the item at this index. So go back to RSRC and I'm gonna keep scrolling down. You can see that it has this RSRC string ID. So I'm gonna keep scrolling down until I go to 272. Uh, 272. And this is the final flag right here. Flag resources are popular for malware. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, if there's any challenges you guys want me to take a look at, please let me know.